I think I can believe that. I've gone awfully mad sometimes and almost forgotten what I was doing. I think I believe you. I think I can believe it. Then that was it. Something just seized you. It wasn't anything you really felt against me. It was just some kind of hate you felt all along. It wasn't anything personal. I believe you. It's okay, because I understand, and I believe you. That was a quote from Phineas, aka Finney, at the end of chapter 12, right before his, spoiler alert, death. Finney is definitely one of, if not the most important characters in the story. Understanding Finney is almost akin to understanding all of a separate piece itself. Nevertheless, understand him we must. And in order to do that, there are three things we must do. Understand his personality traits, the conflicts he goes through, and as well as his characterization throughout the story. Also of note, there are two movie adaptations of a separate piece, one released in 1972 and the other released in 2004. We will be using the 2004 version of the movie because, for lack of a better word, the one from 1972 is not that great. So without any further ado, let's begin. So let's cover Finney's personality traits, and we'll start with Finney's athletic ability. Before his leg break, which left him crippled and in crutches for the rest of his life, Finney was of course quite the athlete. He was a football player and swimmer, and being the best the Devon school could offer. Jean mentions this in chapter 4, saying, quote, He had won and been proud to win the Galbraith Football Trophy and the Contact Sport Award, and there were two or three other athletic prizes he was sure to get this year or the next. So that's all well and good. However, as the stereotype goes, if you were a really good athlete, you were probably not the best student. And of course, Finney inherits this. Jean says in chapter 4, quote, he got grades that were barely passing. It wasn't that he never worked, because he did work in short, intense bouts now and then. This shows while he may have done work, he was not really excelling in it. Aside from athletic achievements and academic downfalls, Finney is a good communicator, and throughout the story, he is made out as an outgoing, well-spoken charmer. After a conversation with Mr. Prudhomme, Jean points out Finney's articulacy, saying, quote, he pressed his advantage because he saw that Mr. Prudhomme was pleased, one over in spite of himself. If Phineas pressed hard enough, there might be a flow of simple, unregulated friendliness between them, and such flows were one of Phineas' reasons for living. Another attribute about Finney is that he questions authority figures and seems pretty... And this is not a political comment. ...libertarian. Again, Gene describes Finney saying, quote, Phineas didn't really dislike West Point, the U.S. Army Academy in particular, or authority in general but just considered authority the necessary evil against which happiness was achieved by reaction, the backboard which returned all the insults he threw at it. Finally, the last highlighting feature of Finney's character is his modesty, sometimes forceful modesty. A great example of this is Gene and Finney in the Devon Pool, where Finney speaks in A. Hopkins Parker in swimming. Gene wants people to know of Finney's achievement, but he thoroughly refutes it, saying, quote, I just wanted to see if I could do it. Now I know, but I do not want to do it in public. Finney even reiterates, saying, quote, We aren't going to talk about this. It's just between you and me. Don't say anything about it. To anyone. That line sort of goes back to the forceful modesty that was mentioned earlier. Now that we know a bit more about Finney's personality traits, we now have to know how he used them. Specifically, the arising conflicts that included Finney, as well as the type of conflicts he experienced. Let's start with the actual conflicts themselves. The first and most obvious was his leg break, when Jean made Finney fall off a tree by shaking the branch. This happens at the end of chapter 4, and directly afterwards, Finney is taken to an infirmary to be treated by Dr. Stanpole. He eventually recovers, but Finney is stuck handicapped for the rest of the story. The second conflict is, arguably, Finney's separation from Jean itself, after the leg break. The story has sort of made clear that Finney and Jean are really one and the same, and their separation was hard for both of them. That is why I think this is worthy to be called a conflict on its own. Another conflict was Jean and Finney's argument in Chapter 5, which was a real stain on their relationship. When Jean goes to visit Finney just before the start of the winter session, Jean tries to come clean of what his real intentions on the ranch were. Jean says to Finney, quote, I jounced the limb, I caused it. He goes on saying, quote, I deliberately jounced the limb so you would fall off. Finney finds this ridiculous and tells Jean of course he didn't, and he is just being a fool. However, things escalate, and Jean goes on, forcing his admittance on him until Finney says, I'm gonna hit you if you don't sit down. Jean harshly and coldly threatens him, saying, Hit me! You can't even get up! You can't even come near me! In response, Finney said, I don't know anything. Go away. I'm tired of you and you make me sick. Go away. 
Jean scurries back to the train and eventually back to Devon, and the two boys would not speak until chapter 6. The final conflict comes much later in the story. After Phineas and Jean reconcile, Phineas, quite clumsily if you ask me, breaks his leg again. After a grand quote-unquote court session, similar to the one that was held in the butt room a few chapters earlier, Finny and Jean are put on trial to find out what really happened the day Finny broke his leg. Led by Brinker Hadley and attended by many other boys, Finny and Jean are bombarded with questions. Every single time Jean is accused of something, either he or Finny will strenuously deny it, with Jean knowing exactly what happened and Finny knowing nothing what happened. Sick and tired of the trial, Finny bolts out of the auditorium where it was taking place, falling down the stairs and breaking his leg again in the process. After Finny gets a night of care at the infirmary and a surprise visit from Jean through the window of his room, Jean visits Finny again the next day, bringing all of his belongings. Jean reiterates, even after previously denying it to Finny, that it was indeed him that made him fall off. Even Jean's version of events has been basically confirmed, Finny still tries to brush it off, frantically thinking that Jean didn't really mean to do it, and it was just an impulse that he couldn't control. While Finney's observation may seem pretty improbable to most, Jean tells him that is exactly what happened, but he knows there's no real way to prove it to Finney. Finney puts him at ease and tells Jean, I believe you. It's okay because I understand and I believe you. You've already shown me and I believe you. It is emotional and borderline tear-jerking, and it becomes all the more so when the next day, Finney dies from a bone marrow-induced heart attack. It is a truly sad ending to Finney's story, and subsequently, a separate piece, because seeing after this, chapter 13, there isn't much else. Gene is given some exposition into his military career, along with a conversation with Breaker's dad, but essentially, that's it. It's the end of the book. It really phones home how this is just as much a story of Finney as it is of Gene, and it also goes to show how interconnected the two boys really are. But how, though? We've seen all these conflicts Finney went through, but what type of conflicts are they? Well, I think firstly, we should look at what it's not. Let's get the obvious ones out of the way. Man vs. Supernatural and Man vs. Technology. Finney isn't exactly fighting aliens or evil robots, so those can be discounted. Also, I don't think Finney goes through any conflicts with nature, because everything that happens in the story is at the fault of himself or others. However, from here it gets a bit tricky since these conflicts could apply at least in some way, all of them. Now, there are arguments to be made that Finney's conflicts include man versus society. Seeing as the way he's treated with a handicap was different from without one, I would say, although it isn't the best argument. So this now leaves us with two conflicts that Finney experiences. This isn't much of a surprise, seeing as the two, these two conflicts are the most common conflicts in storytelling. First one, while not as obvious, is man versus man. Now, while it is very clear there is no real enemy that Finney has, and there is obviously no antagonist in a separate piece, it has to be acknowledged the person who put him in this conundrum in the first place, Gene. He is Finney's blessing as well as his curse. He is a supportive friend and cares for him a lot, but at the same time, he is the one responsible for his light break and putting him in the situation he was in the entire story. However, the conflicts that Finney goes through are mostly internal, and really focus on his self-reflection. He and he alone had to face the fact he could no longer serve in the war or basically do anything he could before. Because of this, he changes his entire persona, and, he, and in regards to the war, he changes from thinking he believes in it to saying that the war is just something made up by America's elite, instead of showing how bummed out he really is. While other arguments can be made, most of Finney's conflicts, like Jean's, are internal. So far, we've covered Finney's personality, as well as his conflicts and the type of conflicts he goes through. But now, it's time to go a bit more in-depth into Finney's characterization throughout the story. Phineas is, of course, a very sophisticated character and thus there are multiple different things to cover in terms of his characterization. While there are some clear things about Finney that don't need much explaining, such as his popularity with the other kids at Devon, other things need to be looked at more in depth. 
They are the differences between Finney on the outside and inside, his interesting relationship with authority figures, and finally his incredibly complex relationship with Jean. Let's cover one part of his character, his personality on the inside and the outside. I think the clearest example of this is his belief in the war. He was quite adamant in the later chapters that he did not believe there was a war going on, asking Jean in chapter 8, do you really think that the United States of America is in a state of war with Nazi Germany and Imperial Japan? Jean is quite perturbed, and he thinks Finney is acting like this because he's on a drug of some sort. But Finney is firm, and his reasoning for this pseudo-war is that the fat, old, rich men just want to make the youth sadder. However, as mentioned, we know these aren't Finney's true intentions. We know that he tried vigorously to get into any military branch he could, but he couldn't. Another part of his characterization is his relationship with authority figures. As mentioned before, Finney is a sort of anti-authoritarian guy, but he's also made out to be a small-brained and sporty popular kid. You would think he'd be a sort of outlaw, bad to the teachers, but it's actually the contrary. There's an interesting circle of respect from the teachers to Finney. Let me explain. There are a few quotes that really prove this, one earlier in the book and one later on. The first is a conversation with Mr. Perdum. We had been swimming in the river, Finney explained. Then there had been a wrestling match. Then there was that sunset that anybody would want to watch. Then there'd be several friends we had to see on a business he rambled on. As Mr. Perdum looked at him and listened to the scatterbrained eloquence of his explanation, he could be on a rapidly losing grip of sternness. Now this quote goes back to one of Finney's traits, his charm. But disconnected from his charm is the loss of sternness for Mr. Burdum, how Finney's rambling on gets him out of any trouble. Granted, Mr. Burdum is not described as a super strict rule enforcer, so it is unlikely that he would have been punished anyway. However, another encounter with Mr. Ludsbury definitively shows how Finney can get his way out of a situation with authority figures. After some quote-unquote sweet talk Finney gives about Jean aiming for the Olympics, there is some pushback from Mr. Ludsbury, saying his focus should be the war. However, quote, Finney's face set in determination, with the older look I had just detected in him. No, he said. I don't believe any student had ever said no flatly to Mr. Ludsbury before. It flustered him uncontrollably. These two quotes show Finney's effectiveness in handling teachers and his relationship with authority in general. It also adds to one of his personality traits, his modesty. The final part of his characterization is his complex relationship with Jean. While there are of course the bonds and interests they share, which are important in their own right, the main focus I want to put on their relationship is how intertwined they both are. And there is a quote that best exemplifies this. This was at the end of chapter 12, while Jean narrates Finney's funeral. I did not cry then or ever about Finney. I did not cry even when I stood watching him being lowered into the family's straight-laced burial on the ground outside of Boston. I could not escape the feeling that this was my own funeral, and you do not cry in that case. Jean's use of my own funeral is key here. The inseparability of both Jean and Finney are by far the most critical part of their friendship. Fun fact! Did you know that John Knowles actually created a short story entitled Finney that was the inspiration for a separate piece? If you want to read the story yourself, go to yeahaseparatepeace.tumblr.com. I swear to you that is the actual name, I could not find the story anywhere else. Link will be in the description. Before I finish, I feel it's right to acknowledge the nature of Knowles' story. Because while I've talked a lot about Jean and Finney's complex relationship, I'd be remiss if I did not me at least mention the theories of homosexual relationship between the two. If one were to think this, they would not be alone. One YouTube search will lead down a rabbit hole of people thinking Jean and Finney are a bit more than friends. However, Knowles had addressed this. In a 1987 interview with the South Florida Sun Centennial, Knowles said, quote, If there had been homoeroticism between Phineas and Jean, I would have put it in the book, I assure you. It simply wasn't there. End quote. Overall, to conclude, Finney is a great character. His upbeat and quirky personality is one of the hallmarks of a separate piece and makes the story all the more entertaining. My name is Giampaolo Babazzi. Thank you for watching.